In this lecture, we will explain what algorithmic information dynamics is. First of all, when defining a complexity measure, why would we need a measure of complexity at all? Suppose you are interested in diseases investigated by gene behavior, and we identify a set of genes that are more complex than others. Um, and those others are healthy genes. Why would that information help us in any way? A complexity measure should only be advanced if one can learn something from its application and tells us something about the nature of the behavior of the system. So what is algorithmic information dynamics and how it uses algorithmic complexity? Well, it is a new field that can be considered part of an alternative to the challenge of inductive inference to, to which other um, interesting approaches have also contributed. In particular, the fields of uh, computational mechanics as introduced by Crutchfield and others, and general artificial intelligence as defined by Hutter, and of course, uh, algorithmic probability as defined by Solomonov, Chaitin, and Levin. Um, the main advantage of our methods based on algorithmic probability is that they do not constrain the computational power of the models that can be abstract to explain a, a piece of data. So instead of, for example, using Markov chain models or, or finite automata that are of lower computational power than Turing uh, complete automata and may miss some aspects of algorithmic content, our methods uh, are not artificially bounded in any way and they try to take advantage of the unrestricted nature of the mod models that they can produce. That is uh, with the full power of context-free grammars and during complete computer languages. A uh, dis uh, disadvantage, of course, is that the space of uh, computer programs uh, for unrestricted uh, computational power is even larger uh, among other things because of the halting problem that you run a computer program and you never know whether it's going to halt or not. So an exhaustive exploration is ultimately impossible due to these uncomputability results. But we have shown that numerical approximations can give us an edge in the challenge of causation as we saw in the last lectures and is thus worth, worth it to try and push these boundaries. To illustrate the core ideas behind the theory and see how algorithmic information dynamics can be applied, let me use a very popular discrete dynamical system, a two-dimensional cellular automaton, better known as the game of life, because of its similarities to some basic but essential properties of life, such as life itself, death, reproduction, mobility and interaction. You can see how starting with some random initial configuration, persistent patterns emerge. And in the density diagram, one can see that some patterns are more resilient than others. Another way to visualize the game of life is with a space-time diagram. So because this is a two-dimensional cellular automaton, adding time would create a three-dimensional object, showing the evolution of the cells over time. Now, as observers, we may always have a slice of the space and time, but rarely full access to the generating rules that in this case are shown on top. So as an observer, we may always have a partial view at a given time. This is important to realize because we will ask about the algorithmic complexity of the evolution of certain patterns, even though the algorithmic complexity of the entire system is always the same disregarding time and space because it all comes from a deterministic dynamical system. And thus the generating rule is always exactly the same. So, as we had seen before, the algorithmic complexity of a deterministic dynamical system at any time is always the same except for the term accounting for the runtime t, which is in the order of the logarithm of t. But we can still ask about the algorithmic complexity of a small observation window in a slice or snapshot of the space-time of the cellular automaton, because there may be mechanisms that can explain in shorter terms a single pattern as compared to the whole system. Additionally, 
while there is nothing random in a deterministic system, when interactions happen outside the observation window, those interactions may appear random inside the window, not only to us, but to any tool trying to characterize the behavior inside the window, as isolated from the rest of the system. The game of life is some sort of ecosystem in which patterns emerge from the interaction of particles that appear and evolve according to the rules of this cellular automaton. Here, for example, we have the most popular pattern in the game of life called a glider. A glider is a set of cells that seem to move together in a, or, an orderly fashion and can be considered to be a single entity because it is its continuous interaction between the cells that makes them persist over time and space and even give, give the impression to be moving. A glider only occupies nine cells in a square matrix of three by three and we can always zoom in close enough to follow the evolution of a glider. One can see from the bottom, bottom of the figure that the glider moves, but in doing so it actually remains in only four different configurations, in what would be a cycle attractor if no other particle interacts with it. The cycle has period five because once the pattern repeats itself, then produces the same sequence of behavior every five steps. So we can apply BDM, the order parameter in this plot, to study the changing complexity of this pattern evolving over time. And we can see that actually the complexity cycle is much shorter than its configuration cycle, a period two versus a period five. So to this very simple idea is to what we call algorithmic information dynamics, in this case illustrated with a very simple case that already tells us something interesting about the dynamical system of this pattern, that the complexity of the glider comes in two types only, because now it's clear every two steps the glider is actually a rotation of the configuration of its two previous steps. One can perform this same analysis to other patterns that coexist in the ecosystem of the game of life, where global rules dictating the behavior of the system are out of reach, but BDM would help us to analyze an observation window around a region with an evolving persistent pattern. And then all sorts of interesting patterns can be traced in detail and better understood by characterizing their change in complexity over time. Here, for example, we have cases in which symmetry, preservation and decay characterizes the various emergent patterns of size up to 4x4 four four in the game of life. This is how all small particles in the game of life can be traced in detail. Some of them die out after a short period of time, but some others may continue indefinitely evolving. In fact, the game of life has been proven to be Turing universal, which means it can get into infinite computations and can produce any number of different and open-ended forms, hence increasing or decreasing the local algorithmic complexity of different regions of the automaton. Here from left to right we have 12 small patterns up to 4x4 four four matrices that evolve. So what about the characterization of events? Events also happen in the game of life and they are actually the responsible for the emergence of new particles in this cellular automaton, so they are fundamental for the system to remain alive, so to speak. Here are different types of collisions of the famous glider. One can produce artificial collisions by placing the particles in specific places to wait for them to collide knowing how they move. There are four types of these collisions involving all up to four gliders. In a four-particle collision, new particles are created both temporarily and permanently, although the resulting particles are static, even if stable or persistent. I call this particle interaction a near-miss, because the particles seem not to touch each other, even when they do interact and lead to a small increase in algorithmic complexity, before settling into a configuration of lower complexity than the original particles. All this is consistent with what we see in the evolution of the particle, as particles colliding momentarily generate new information 
with new particles that the cells in the observation window can explain only to a few steps later converge again to a low complexity static configuration. Not all collisions are the same. One can have the same four particles but arranged in a slightly different square matrix leading to a longer transition of new particles and a different cycle attractor with period 2, as this last configuration or fixed point cycles between two configurations can show. Two particle collisions in diagonal lead to annihilation and this can be traced by BDM in detail and some collisions even lead to open-ended emergence of new particles of never-ending dynamics. At the end, the algorithmic dynamics of all cases can be aggregated and a clear pattern emerges. There are basically three types of collisions among particles of up to four gliders. Some produce more diversity of other particles and others simply decay. In both density plots showing the attractors and basin self-attraction uh, and also the plots of the algorithmic dynamics, this can be witnessed. We will see how we can come from tracking particles and characterizing events to reconstructing the dynamics of them by using algorithmic information dynamics. <laughs>